Hi, this is Brother Richard, <coughs> and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototopus Mystery. This will be part 377. We're continuing with our lesson title, Inheritance of the Saints. This will be part 2. We've been talking about <coughs> the plan of the Father from eternity before the foundation of the earth his master plan was completed the scripture teaches the knowledge of the events of this age have been recorded in a book by the father after the ascension of the son back to the father he was given the book having received the book he ordained a group of Prototokus teachers to be its custodians. Revelation, the first chapter, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. <coughs> so, <coughs> the Father gives the revelation to the Son. The Son imparts it to a select group to uh, have custody over this Revelation book. Revelation 22, verses 8 to 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. So, John is so awed by what he has been shown that he attributes its source to the angel that shows him. Of course, the angel stops him and gives him an understanding of uh, what's really taking place. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets. So the angel is zeroing in on the relationship that he has with John. <clears throat> he, like John, served the same master, Sundulos. He, like John, are intimate in that they come from the Revelation office of the body of Christ, the prophets. But then he goes on and narrows it down. And of them, referring to an inner group, which keep or guard the sayings of this book, worship God. So the reason that the angel can show John the things of the book of Revelation is because he has been delegated as a custodian over the book, therefore he has access to draw events from the book and to present them, manifest them as instruments of learning to the interested person. Do you imagine that the teacher in Daniel 8 mm -hmm. yeah, is a custodian angel? Has to be. Because? Because he has access to events that nobody else has access to. I thought about this briefly, well, not too long. <laughs> and it occurred to me, could not the Holy Spirit use another Prototokos angel, who is not a custodian angel, to provide the same service? No. 
Petros. <clears throat> because the Holy Spirit draws from the book of Revelation. And there has to be a connection between the recipient and the source. Jesus was the only one that initially received revelation knowledge. That happened after his ministry. He received the spirit of prophecy, connecting him through the spirit to the book of Revelation. He received progressive revelation. He didn't receive the whole aspect of it. He received it in phases as it was necessary to illustrate his ministry office. We said that in the last lesson. Every time something would happen, he would pronounce, he would make an announcement, this is the fulfillment of what is written in the book. Nobody else who doesn't have a relationship with the book can make that statement. Okay. Yes. Revelation 21, 12. Mm -hmm. That's not it. And it's, it's Revelation, hang on. Maybe it's 2012. Yes. Um, but what what I, what I want to bring out is um, Jesus speaks out what he hears. What is that here in Revelation? John sixteen. Oh, it's John sixteen. Okay, that's right. I'm sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. it, it just came through part of my study this morning. So, he's speaking out something that he's hearing, obviously from the Father, but he's, he's not reading from a book, or is he reading from a book? No. He's hearing from the Holy Spirit, who is getting the revelation from the book, passing it on to him. You were referring to Jesus giving revelation from what he heard. Is that correct? Right. Okay. This is John 16, he said. Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, John 16, he's referring to verses 14, 15. Actually, Verse 13, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So he's referring here to the Holy Spirit hearing what the Father is telling him to give to the individual that needs the revelation of what's being said. This refers to everything that pertains to the saint. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath of mine, therefore said I, he shall take of mine, and show it unto you. So what the Holy Spirit's job is to do <coughs> to the saint in general is to impart revelation knowledge to them commensurate with their calling. The Father speaks to him to give to that saint what the saint needs to receive. You say, why is it like that? Because he has a diversified calling. This one's called to be an elder. This one's called to be a priest. This one's called to be a pillar angel. This one's called to be a temple angel. This one's called to be ultimately <clears throat> a bride member. He's going to speak revelation, customized to get the individual on the path that he needs 
to receive the, the qualification for whatever it is he's called to do. The Revelation book is going to be given to a select group. We just read it. John is told, I'm of that group of custodians. What does that mean? That means that they have a specific connection to the book the others don't have. Therefore, Revelation is going to be different from them than it is for the others. In eternity, these that are custodians of the book are going to be the teachers of all the others. Hence the example that you had in Daniel, the 8th chapter. I heard a saint speaking to another saint who is also directing an angel. So he is a custodian of the book. He's getting consistent revelation about all things the others aren't. This way, as I see the scriptures, the way the fathers ordain it to, to, to work. It's very, in my mind, very similar to the on the earth to the prophets receiving revelation and giving it to the apostles to give this to the church. This is what we're going to cover. Right. right. But the, the 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 two mechanisms that they line up. Yes. This is the way the Father has disposed it to take place. What you just talked about is going to be a major part of our lesson. But does that address your question or did you want yeah, to? Yeah, 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 I did. Um, there's a bunch more stuff included in it, but because I started off in Revelation instead of John, I had to do a little catch up and things have migrated on past. It's in the back of my mind when it gets when it comes together it will I'll speak it out and then we'll deal with it then. Okay. <clears throat> Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates that the revelations contained in the book are now accessible to the counterparts of the Prototokos guardians in heaven. In other words, <coughs> when the Son gave the book to the angels to be the custodians, the stewards over the book, their counterparts on earth also were given the connection to receive information, revelation from the book. So, does that tell us that the to be custodian angels, so they're not custodians yet, of course. Their earthly counterparts are receiving it before any other protocols. Um, yes. That's the word. Prophetic office. That's what because they're the ones that have to give it to the others. So they're the first ones who can receive it. Does this mean then that those are the first group of Matthew 24, 45 teachers? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to see an example of that. Turn to Revelation 22, verse 10. <clears throat> and he, the angel, saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. In other words, he's to give what he's received to the recipients in the churches of his day. Why? Because the connection has to be made so that they can begin to do what they've been called to do. Now we're going to see how this plays out as we progress. Scripture indicates at the beginning of sorrows the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed from the heavens to every corner of the earth. Matthew 24, 14 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. What is this to say? This is to say, at the beginning of sorrows, the gospel is going to be laid on the whole human race. Luciferian, Adamic, Cryptoid, everybody's going to hear the gospel. Why? Because it will open the door to the faithful servant to teach what has been proclaimed. What did Jesus do? Jesus proclaimed the gospel. And what would he do? He'd go in and he'd teach about what he proclaimed. Same thing's going to happen at the beginning of sorrows. They're going to hear, then it's going to open a door, and then the teacher's going to come in and fill the void with understanding. But let's go on. Scripture indicates at this time, teachers who from eternity <coughs> were called for this purpose will proclaim the words of the book of Revelation. Matthew 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? What does that mean? That means in eternity, when the Lord received the book, and he gives it to this select group of angel custodians, Their counterparts on earth were destined to have access to the book of Revelation. At that time and on into this time. We're going to look at an example of this. Who are the counterparts that the angel is talking about? trying to make this as simple as possible. Turn to 1 Peter, 1st chapter, verse 9 to Peter is referring to the suffering of the saints. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. In other words, they're going to go through things, ultimately they're going to experience deliverance. Of which salvation, deliverance, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. What's being said here? <clears throat> the angel tells John, I am your fellow Servant, I am of your brethren, the prophets. I am of those that have custody of the book. Those that have custody over the book, counterparts on the earth, come from the group of the prophets. 
they now have access to the revelation the counterparts in heaven have that's why he tells John don't seal the book keep it open because the counterparts on earth are now open to draw from it to begin to teach those that are being sent to them who are they being sent to? apostles they have to have the revelation to give to the apostles so the apostles who are found in the churches can establish the foundation in which the church community can grow without the prophets giving revelation to the apostles it's not going to happen yes. Brother Jones okay so we have our counterparts being spoken of in this lesson yes and I need it a little bit clearer for myself to know exactly how it is that I pay attention to both him and myself without screwing things up, without doing wrong things wrong. How is it that we keep our Let's see, what is it? Counterpart in mind as we're doing things because we must live lives of holiness for them to maintain their position in heaven, yes? Yes. Yes. It all it all stems from two things the word of God and the Spirit of God. The Spirit is given to us to guide us, to instruct us to give us understanding of all things. Now, everybody in the body of Christ has the same marching order. The new birth enables the spirit to come in and dwell. The baptism enables the individual to receive revelation, knowledge, and power. When that happens, the individual is open to understanding of his place in the scheme of things. As you grow by killing the flesh, separating from the human, your understanding of your eternal position becomes more and more clearer. Yes. What I'm getting from you now though, right now, Mr. Jones, is that the the idea that we are a complex system of of a being with multi-dimensional existence capabilities, so on and so forth. So now, what you are telling us is that we have to make sure the whole part that we are of the body remains holy and that we desire to seek deeper understanding. We have to be in that category in order to receive so that we can be ready for our positions in, in eternity. That's so the, the only way we can develop. The whole thing has to do with developing to what you've been called to do and be in eternity. The one, the instrument, the implement that does the developing is the Holy Spirit. Right. He develops you, he crafts you to be the unique individual that God uh, predetermined you to be in eternity. What we're looking at are the different positions. Temple angel, pillar angel, elder, a custodian over the book. You're being crafted from one of these positions uniquely. In order for that to happen, we have to be totally focused on receiving understanding from the Holy Spirit. Now let me give you something here that we're going to look at the temple angel. I mean, not the temple angel. We're going to look at the custodian angel. The individual that steward over the book. First and foremost, the curiosity. You say, well, how do I know if I'm part of that group? How do I know if I'm part of a temple angel group or a pillar angel group or an elder group? You do this through a weeding out process of experiences that you are going to engage in. That's part of the path. The Father will put experiences on the path to give you an understanding of where you stand in these different places. In the case of the custodian angel, we're going to take a look 
Revelation, the 10th chapter. Excuse me. I'm sorry. We're going to go there, but first I wanted you to go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19, verse 10. Here, Angel makes a declaration. I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So everybody that's part of the custodian group over the book has the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus. If you are called in that vein, what's going to happen if you are open to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit is that aspect of the Holy Spirit is going to manifest in you. You're going to experience revelation and comprehension of the things that come through the spirit of prophecy. Having said it, now turn back to 1 Peter, 1st chapter. Again, we're going to read verses 9 to 12. Now this isn't easy, and it's gonna. A lot of people are gonna be lost, but we're going this way, direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired. The prophets have inquired. Prophets have inquired. What does that mean? They have searched. They want to understand. What is the salvation composed of? How does it come? When does it come? Who is it coming to? The Holy Spirit is going to give them understanding of this in its totality. Why are they, why are they pursuing it? Because intrinsically... They're called to be the custodians to answer the question. Let's go on. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Search what diligently? The scriptures. The word. Who prophesies the grace that should come unto you? So they're searching the scripture. Now understand this is not the Old Testament prophets. These are the New Testament prophets. They came into being on the day of Pentecost. They're filled with the Spirit. The first thing they do is to pursue their ministry, their calling. What is their calling? To give insight, revelation to the body of Christ. Direct the body of Christ. Instruct the body of Christ. Give them understanding of the purpose of God in their life. Verse... 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified, when it, the Spirit of Christ, testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Now what is he saying here? Time to compare scripture. The angel in Revelation, the 19th chapter, says, I have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. It talks about the prophets here searching. In other words, they're wide open to receive direction and understanding from who? The spirit that's in them. What did the Spirit that's in them give them? We just read it. Searching what, or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ, Spirit of Prophecy, 
the testimony of Jesus, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand. In other words, what they're receiving is prophecy. It hadn't happened yet. They're given revelation. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Now people reading this is think they're talking about Christ. They're not talking about Christ. They're talking about the saints of Christ. The Spirit in them is giving them the understanding so that he can prepare the saints for the sufferings of Christ. It's all future. The sufferings of Christ that they are going to experience that will enable them to overcome and to progress on the path that God has called them to do. These are the counterparts of, the, of the, the angels in heaven, the custodial angels. You see an example of that. Turn to Acts, 20th chapter. Okay, we want, um, bear with me a minute. Acts, the 21st chapter. Starting in verse 10. As we tarried there many days, there came down from Jerusalem a certain prophet named Agabus. When he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. The Spirit in him is giving him the understanding of what the saints are going to suffer, the sufferings of Christ in the future, so they can be prepared when they have to undergo it. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and to deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. This is what Peter is talking about. The group of the prophets who are the counterparts of the custodians in heaven are receiving revelation knowledge that pertains to the saints and the apostles about experiencing the sufferings of Christ and what it's going to entail, how long it's going to entail, when to expect it, and what to do to prepare for it. Going back to 1 Peter. First chapter. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. We just saw an example of it. Paul is at Troas or wherever he is. Agabus comes down purposely to intercept him to prepare him for what he's going to experience when he goes to Jerusalem. Then he goes on, unto whom it was revealed that not that not unto themselves the prophets, but unto us, us, the body plus the apostles. 
they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into so the angels are going to be students of ultimately the same teachers but that will be in eternity the prophets are the core of the revelation of the body of Christ for that time they prepared the body of Christ Paul Peter uh, all of them for what their future was you're going to suffer this way you're going to experience the sufferings of Christ prepare yourself Agabus uh, pro uh, prophesies a whole drought that would take place covering the church in general so they could prepare and make provision for it. He tells Paul, an apostle, what he's going to have to do to prepare himself. It goes on and on and that was then. The same thing is going to happen at the beginning of sorrows. Those who have been called with the spirit of Christ who are the connectors whose counterparts in heaven are the custodians of the book are going to be the faithful teachers but that's what he means when he says who is who is his Lord hath called him to the call went out in eternity what's happening here is it being prepared now for the time when the XY axis crosses at the beginning of sorrow. The revelation is going to come forth through the spirit that's in you to prepare others for the, the same thing that they did in the past. Now turn to uh, Revelation, the 10th chapter. Those that are, 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 are the, the counterparts of the custodians are going to have all revelation knowledge because it's been promised to them. Revelation 10th chapter verse 7 But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets Agabus in that group 2,000 years ago were given voluminous revelation knowledge I'll give you an example of that the scripture here just tells us what they've been taught what they've been taught dealing with the age that they were in that they were to pass on to the apostles and the body of Christ turn to second Peter third chapter Excuse me, uh, yeah, Second Peter, third chapter. Starting in verse 8. Oh, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. The one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering to us word and willing and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. How did people, Peter, find out about this? From the threat, because it was mentioned. Prophets yeah. told him. They gave the apostles the whole revelation scenario from what they were receiving. Now, what the apostles did with it, that's Paul went and he took off. 
course, he had a different position. He was given a, a, a high advanced gospel. Sure. But Peter talks about the things we learned came from the prophets. We're passing it on to you. Yeah, the apostles had revelation knowledge, but they were basically instructed to be the instructors of the churches. That's where they spent most of their time. Mm -hmm. The prophets, as we just learned, had time to diligently search the scripture to receive revelation knowledge that they could pass on to the saints. The prophets were the recipients of the custodial angels who through the book of Revelation imparted to them what they needed to know. The same thing is going to happen to us only on a higher scale. As we progress more and more and more, you're going to find understanding, comprehension. This is where wisdom comes in. You're going to know what other people don't know because you're going to have the spirit within you of Christ the testimony of Christ. We've been called from eternity to do just what we just read. We're called now, we're the latter day prophets. They're going to be doing the same thing that Agabus and that group did for the body of Christ at that time. We're going to be doing it for the body of Christ at this time. Turn to Revelation 22nd chapter. We said the gospel of the kingdom is going to be spoken to all the world by angels and then the faithful servant is going to go forth and teach what has been proclaimed. Now, as they go forth, Revelation 22 So in verse 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Who's going to be proclaiming the things from this book? You. You. Why? Because you're the custodians of the revelation that comes from this book. He goes on. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. This is an admonition for the individual that's proclaiming it. The evil servant. Mm. You mess it up, you do it wrong, unjustly by it, your history. So that's like not reading Matthew 24 verses 9 through. Has somebody playing fast and loose with his authority, not taking it seriously, he's going to have some dues come when the Lord returns. Verse 20. He was testifying of these things, saying, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. This is talking about Luke 21. He's going to descend for the gathering. All this deals with the book of Revelation is going to become world well known at the time of the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. Not the, the tribulation period. Beginning of sorrows. The servants are going to go forth prepared to teach, to feed the elder group that's going to come out of the destruction of the Adamic order. They must be prepared for the time of the establishment of the community so they can go in and be prepared for their calling. Everything is very, very important. 
must be done according to the directive of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> These individuals, once they're given, well, turn to Ephesians, first chapter. I'm saying these individuals you referring to the prophets. Uh, <clears throat> I'm referring to yes, and I'm referring to the prophets in the in the guise of the faithful servants okay. of uh, Matthew 24. Verse nine, starting in verse nine. <coughs> having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself if you are a custodian if you are a descendant a counterpart of the angelic custodian in the heavens you are going to be given the understanding of the beginning of sorrow's era. You are going to know intrinsically and understand events that are taking place because the Holy Spirit is going to prepare you for the time in which this thing falls flat and you go forth performing what God's called you to do. It's going to be intrinsically understood in you before it happens. This is what Paul is talking about. The Father will manifest the knowledge, having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He had purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times <coughs> He might gather together in one all things in Christ, which both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him, the work is all things after the counsel of his will, own will. You identify as a prototokos, you identify as <clears throat> an instrument proclaiming the events that are going about to take place. If you believe this, you're going to speak it. If you speak it, you're going to see what you spoke coming to pass. As you see things coming to pass, you're going to get more and more revelation. Until you see events culminating, just as the Word had said they would culminate, and people will see what you said come to pass, you become an authority figure. You are going to be listened to, you're going to be feared, you're going to be understood to a certain degree. As you rise, organized religion falls because the things they have said are not going to come to pass and people are going to put any faith and trust in what they have been given. I'll give you an example of that. Just this morning, Dorothy's prayer line, a young lady calls, she asked a question that she'd been pondering for some time, dealing with the earth. Is the earth perpetual? Is the earth going to end at some time? What does the Bible say about the earth? Dorothy asked me to address the question, which I did. I took her to the same scripture we just read, <clears throat> Second Peter, the third chapter. Not just the earth, but the heavens are going to pass away. And I wanted to explain to her that at that point, the physical goes out of existence and everything becomes eternal spiritual at that point there are only going to be two realities reality of light reality of darkness the reality of light is the medium in which the righteous will experience eternity everything dealing with God in eternity is an aspect of light those who do not qualify to enter into the realms of light will spend eternity in the darkness regions. Hell, the lake of fire, outer darkness. After I explained that, she said, 
she was angry. She said, why haven't we been told that before? <laughs>